I'm in like a pendulum. Keep coming. Keep coming. Nice. All right. Yes. Nice work, buddy. <laughs> nice work. That's what it's all about. Look at that fish. Nice little sack rainbow. Oh, huh? I don't know about awesome. little. Beautiful. Nice. Well done. Well, hi, I'm Chip with Active NorCal, and we're out here this afternoon with Chris King from the Fly Shop. He's one of the premier fly shop fishing guides. And very few people know more about the Sacramento River than this young man. So uh, let's go down and get some fish, rip some lips, shall we? Sounds great. Let's go. So the Sacramento River is the only river in the world that has four distinct different runs of Chinook salmon. Okay, and so Chinook uh, are, are based upon when they come into the river. So you know some rivers have springers, you have a fall run, you have a winter run. Mm -hmm. So this is when our winter run um, spawns. So they came into the system in the winter, they migrated all the way up here, and during their spawning time, um, they've closed this section of the river in order to protect them. Uh, and on August 1st, when it opens back up, the first couple weeks of August fishing up here is fantastic for the trout. They've had rest, they haven't seen a fly in so long, and they get fooled by the easiest ties uh, you can imagine, at least for the first couple of days. So. These guys get some spectacular views, don't they? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's some pretty scenery around riding for sure. Yep. Big water years like this and mountains all get snow capped. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty special place in the spring and early summer. Well, let's make a plan. Let's uh, let's just drop right next to the bridge pylon and see if I can hit that little riffle a couple times right there. Pitch it in right here, we'll get a big one. Three flies, you don't mess around. <laughs> well, Chris, I see you've got a three three fly rig, a strike indicator, and a weight. Tell me about uh, the flies you've selected for the, for the day. Um, well, you know, different times of year that's going to change, obviously, right? Right. So, one of the great things about, uh, you know, a little plug hiring a local guide, right, is they know the day-to-day -day changes. Yeah. But this time of year we have a lot of caddis around, there's a lot of PMDs still around. Um, in the evening you'll get more caddis. Uh, so I've got two caddis on and a small mayfly that's a PMD. Mm -hmm. It would have been coming off this morning. And then all these insects will go into the trees, spend a night in the trees, do their mating ritual, come back and lay eggs. So you get both the hatch itself uh, and then the egg layers from the day before uh, coming back and forth on the river. And all of them are susceptible as trout food. Lots so. of opportunity for, mm -hmm. for trout to get big. How would you describe the best fishing water on this river? What, what do you look for as a likely place to the whole trout. So because the sack is so big, um, you know, one thing that it uh, that it has for trout as far as cover goes is depth. Yes. And depth is 100% the best cover for trout. Mm -hmm. um, so we fish a lot of drop-offs. After 20 years here, I've seen a lot of, you know, young guides come up and buy a boat and, you know, want to learn the river. And I'll, I'll tell them something like, uh, move off the drop-off in the run until you can see the bottom on one side and you can't see the bottom on the other fish the side where you can't see the bottom. Mm -hmm. If um, you know the salmon are in spawning, you'll right. find these fish in you know 10 inches of water. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, they're down deep eating bugs under the surface. We think it'd be difficult to, to access the deeper fish if you're just waiting, unless you're a pretty, pretty accomplished caster. It is, yeah. And, but like I said, um, the best waiting is done when the river is lower. Right. Springtime, fall, um, when it gets below 8,000, when it gets below you know, 5,000 CFS. Well, last uh, spring it was at 3,200. There's wade fishing opportunities all over the place. It really concentrates the fish in the center of the river because mm -hmm. they drop out of those shallows. Mm -hmm. The river gets smaller and it's, it's easier to wade. And it, you can be pretty successful doing that yeah. on foot. What strikes me about this river right now, having been gone for a while, is that it's surrounded by so many people. 
you don't find a river of this quality anywhere near this quality in a big metropolitan area like this with the sounds of traffic and you know people walking and I mean not exactly the wilderness yeah no not at all um, it's definitely uh, you know definitely an urban fishery mm -hmm. um, but uh, the characteristics of the river itself you know have been protected like the spawning closure that we have right now and and because of that even with this sprawling urban community that's around it that's growing Reading is growing every day right um, the river itself is just this great little piece of nature that just floats right through the middle of town so we run a big nymphing rig here um, because the water is so deep and the water is high this time of year right and so I'll adjust the bobber and we'll run depth anywhere from five feet from indicator to the split shot mm -hmm. uh, to sometimes nine feet from the indicator to the split shot. And that's how deep those fish are. Yeah. And they're holding down their eating and they're not gonna come up for a little tiny mayfly. So no. we gotta go down and get them. And that's just the nature of it. But one of the things that makes it really easy is this type of fishing doesn't take a lot of technique. You could take somebody right. who's never been uh, fly fishing before and tell them to hold this here, flop it over one side, flop it over the other, and the boat does the rest. Yeah. And it's really a great way to get out with the family. Um, you know, I've had families in the boat where somebody takes a turn sitting in the seat and mom's cheering everybody on and telling them what to do <laughs> and it's really a lot of fun but uh, it's really an easy fishery once you use the drift boat right. and you can just flop it over the side the guide kind of does the rest mm -hmm. learn how to set the hook and play a fish and catch your first trout on a fly rod but I know this is not going to be your first trout on a fly rod so let's go ahead and get a beautiful <laughs> lower sack fish what do you say well thank you okay just throw it right over on the right side it's about 15 20 feet from the boat Go ahead and commit the line down to the water and just big, big upstream mend on it. Okay. Other way. Yeah, right there. Let that float. Chris is changing flies on us. Show the fish a little something different. Do they ever get really, really particular in this river? Yeah. I'll very particular but you know the, the only thing the trout has going for it is that it's wary right yes um, great great instincts yeah they're 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 scared of everything right <laughs> big big natural salmon fly would come down like this big cheeseburger of a meal and <laughs> smack the water like that and if it's the only one of the day every trout will swim away from it yeah yeah, right? yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're really stupid animals which what's what makes them so hard to yeah. catch right so right, exactly you know, we talk about fish on uh you know, Spring Creek River is having their PhD. They're super smart, you of know. Of course. The fact is they're just super scared. Yeah. This is why yeah, they're so yeah. hard to catch, right? Super wary. Yeah. I have to have a very quick hook set here. It's not necessarily hard. It's just really fast. Mm -hmm. And I tell everybody that, you know, the indicators I use um, look like little footballs, right? <laughs> you see this old guy? Little? <laughs> it looks like a football, right? It does. So I, I tell them that they're a linebacker and they're staring at that football, <laughs> waiting for it to move. And the minute it moves, they better jump on it. So. <laughs> okay, just lift that line up back upstream and just drop it back down right there. Let it float. That's what we want to see right there. See how it's standing straight up and down like that? Hey, watch that. Oh. Watch that. All right, let's go back up. Hang on just a second. What bird is that? That's a great blue heron. He's facing the other direction sought, sought after for oh i see it i see it now yeah sought after for its breast feathers because they make great spay flies <laughs> you can't get them anymore except in canada uh. not that i would know <laughs> of course right there Nice work. He's not done yet. Keep him over on this right side. Come on, baby. Oh, there he goes. Pull Come on, baby. Line. Way, way right, way right, way right. Lead him upstream. Now go straight up over your own head. Straight up, 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 up. Next time. All right. Next time. And then go ahead and pinch that. He's done taking line. Stay down and right. You can go straight up right now. Come in like a pendulum. Keep coming. Keep coming. Nice. All right. Yes. Nice work, buddy. <laughs> nice work. That's what it's all about.
Look at that fish. Beautiful, huh? Gorgeous. Show those guys. Yeah, beautiful, huh? Beautiful. All right. Nice little sack rainbow. Oh. Huh? I don't know about awesome. little. Beautiful. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's see how much better a master caster does then. <laughs> hey! Thank you for not catching a fish on your first cast, by the way. <laughs> Make me really look bad. <laughs> oh! There he is. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Here, I'll take him. Here, look at those guys. Great. Beautiful. Nicely done. Great. <laughs> Chris, thank you a million. This was wonderfully successful. It was just uh, the brawn on that those those couple of fish were were, were just amazing. Uh, you should we just how to do it? I think you did most of the work with the boat. So um, how might somebody uh, get a hold of you if they wanted to uh, book a guide trip on the Lower Sacramento River in Redding, California? So just call the Fly Shop in Redding. The Fly Shop in Redding. Best way to do it. Uh, we've got guides that uh, cover the gamut of all of Northern California. Um, dozens and dozens of years of experience between them. Fly casting schools, trips all over the world, any gear you need to outfit yourself. Fly Shop in Redding. I've had guides in a lot of different places, but they don't get any better than you guys, that's for sure. I appreciate that. Much thanks to you, Chris. Yeah, my pleasure, buddy. <laughs> well, this is Chip O'Brien with Active NorCal signing off. We can do multiple takes. Yeah, we'll do multiple takes. You know what you're saying, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was like, I don't know if you're confident or what. I'm confident. We are action. So this is a still shot, right? No. Well, yeah, no, you're talking. I'm not I'm moving. But oh, this is the introduction yes. to... Correct. Yes. <laughs> Tell me when. Action. Hi, I'm Chip from the... Uh, the fly shop. Active, active, active NorCal. Thank you. Hey, I'm Chris King from the fly shop. I'm here with Chip O'Brien from Active NorCal. <laughs> no, no, you do this far more than I do. I write about it. I don't. I don't video it. Are right, you ready? Well, Brian, first of all, thank you. This was an amazing adventure. Are you thinking? Are you thinking Brian, the cameraman, or? <laughs> are you thinking Brian, the oarsman of the other boat? Or? Still kick your ass. <laughs>